it stops. Okay. Time it. So we start our next presentation, uh, this time on VLS multimedia programming using GStreamer and Rust. Please welcome Zisham. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, can you hear me at the back still? Yeah, good. Um, so let's start. Um, first of all, who am I? Um, my name is Zishan Ali, as you know. I work for Red Hat, at least nowadays. <laughs> um, and most of my background is in FOSS, different kinds of uh, free software, open source stuff. I've been doing uh, mostly on GNOME stuff, but uh, some other things as well. Um, and nowadays I work on cloud stuff, or I, at least I'm expected to. Um, and I love flying, and I uh, love cats, so that's a uh, thing about me. Um, and what am I talking about? Um, I'll talk about two different technologies. When they put together, they make a really good combination. Um, Tim, in the previous talk, I heard that he talked a bit about that already. So I don't have to explain a lot, I hope. <laughs> um, but they, these are um, two, um, uh, like Sebastian, he's sitting over there. He's the real hero here, I'm not. I'm just talking about the subject. He did all the work and uh, made it possible. So um, if you want to thank someone, thank him and buy him beers uh, for this work. Um, and his, uh, my talk is inspired by his own talk. We, he, uh, he has presented about the sa same subject before. Um, I have a lot to cover, uh, so I'll go a bit fast. So, but if you don't understand anything, please catch me after the talk, and I'll, can, I'll happily explain things to you if, you don't, if I don't explain well in the talks. Um, firstly, Rust. Um, uh, it's a system programming language, um, and it's designed from uh, the beginning to be both efficient and um, very safe at the same time. There are many programming languages out there that uh, focus on efficiency, um, but they are not very safe. And then there's the others are uh, very uh, safe, but they're not efficient. So, but Rust is one of the few programming languages out there that uh, focus on both. Um, and one of the ways it does that is through um, null. Uh, there's uh, no uh, uh, pointer arithmetic um, in normal Rust, in safe Rust, um, and, uh, which means you can't deref dangling pointers, you can't deref null pointers. And that's like the biggest, one of the biggest source of uh, problems, memory problems in C and C++ and those languages. Um, and even in higher, many higher languages, you still have null pointers. Uh, raw null pointers that you can easily deref, and you have null pointer uh, exception and stuff. Um, so, but Rust doesn't have that. Um, uh, but of course, uh, you can't do everything with safe uh, um, in the safe paradigm of, of Rust. Um, so Rust allows you to make an exception, which is called unsafe, and you just mark your code um, unsafe, and that part of your code uh, usually deals with uh, foreign function interface with C and other programming languages to that world. Um, but since Rust cannot assume this about safety of what this, uh, the, the memory handled by those programming languages uh, from FFI, um, it cannot guarantee safety for you. And that's why you have to mark it unsafe to Rust. Um, and it also allows you to do some pointer arithmetic, which you need to do for interfacing with C. Um, but the good news is that since you mark it as unsafe, that part of the code, if you have a memory problem, you know where the problem lies. And it's much easier to debug if it's marked as unsafe, that part of the code. Um, another thing is that the concept is uh, non-mutable state by default. So you cannot, once you assign a, a resource to a variable, for example, you cannot modify it unless it's marks, marked as mutable. Um, and that also does the similar thing, because um, if you have a problem, uh, any kind of problem, you know that it can only be mutable state that, that's, the pro that's problematic. It cannot be unmutable state that um, gives you any problems. So it's a similar. Uh, concept. Um, another thing Rust has is uh, strict ownership uh, semantics. Um, this is not a concept in C and C++. In some modern C++, uh, yeah, it is, but not really. Um, it, it's not at least enforced by the compiler. Um, so you can still do, uh, even with the most modern C++ uh, standards, you can still do a lot of harm um, through memory management and stuff if you want to. And it's e really easy to do without even wanting to do it. Um, and um, in other languages, it's the, sa the same concept, that the same thing is achieved with uh, garbage collector. But garbage collector is always on runtime. So you are using your user's um, 
resources to, to manage the memory for you. Um, but Rust doesn't do that. Rust is uh, a, a, at least as efficient as C and C++. So um, it doesn't make use of garbage collector. And because of that, it has these concepts like uh, uh, ownership of resources. <laughs> I'll just, um, uh, it's like the concept is very simple. Each resource can only and only have one um, owner. So once you assign to a, to a variable, um, for example here, um, a resource, um, it's um, owned by that variable. So in this example, um, this code won't work because once you uh, assign S1 to S2, you have passed the ownership over to, uh, to S2 and you cannot use S1 anymore because it doesn't have any resources assigned to it anymore. Um, similarly with functions, um, you, if you pass by value uh, the, uh, uh, any resource to a function, you have passed the uh, ownership to that function and you don't own it anymore unless that function returns it to you and you assign it to a variable. Um, if this was S1 uh, equal to some function S1, then it would work because you got the ownership back to you. Um, but uh, the normal, uh, the uh, small uh, data types like uh, uh, that are efficient to copy, uh, they, are, uh, they implement a trait in Rust called uh, copy. And uh, because of that, when you as a pass it to a function by value or to another variable, they just get copied. So you can have, in, the, in a way, a multiple ownership, but it's just copies. Um, when if you have like a very uh, uh, small data type, which is easy to transfer and stuff, and uh, or memory ma um, memory efficient, it doesn't matter to you in your case. Then you can implement the same trait, and um, you can just copy things around. Um, and um, you can borrow um, because if you just have one owner and you ha your ownership gets transferred, it's just not going to work. You you have so many problems uh, uh, that. Uh, yeah, you need something like borrowing. Um, so um, uh, you can, uh, uh, which is, it's a bit like references, uh, pass by reference in C++. You give a reference, and you can have multiple uh, uh, non-mutable references to the same resource in the same uh, code block. Um, but borrows are temporary. Um, so we have uh, other uh, data types um, in Rust, um, uh, something like, for example, RC, which stands for reference counting. Um, so you can have um, multiple objects comp actually pointing to the same resource with this one, um, and they are reference counted for you. Um, so um, each time you need another one, you just clone the, the container uh, of, the, of the actual resource. Um, and it's lightweight, so you don't, you don't have to worry about that you'll, you're copying a lot of the RC structures. Um, but uh, the actual resource will, will might be a bit more heavy, so uh, you use RC for that. And instead of copying or... Uh, ref, um, references. Um, so this code will work, for example, because you cloned and you are using it separately. Um, it's um, now we have bit come to the, uh, the 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 topic, which is kind of like inspiring the title of this talk. Um, in Rust, there is a concept of fearless concurrency, um, which means that in other programming languages, when you as, as soon as you involve threads. Um, things go wrong. And it's really, really hard to manage threads in other programming languages. Um, but Rust um, makes it safe. So uh, you, you will get a lot of errors from compilers uh, from compiler um, when you first do threading in, um, in Rust. <coughs> but um, once you get your code compiled, usually it just works. And you can be assured, uh, uh, you can rest assured that it's working f uh, fine and at runtime. Um, and for achieving that, we have data types like um, arc. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that you, you don't have um, shared, you can't share a state between threads um, unless they implement some particular uh, traits, um, uh, the, the, the data type that you want to share. And most of them don't. So you, you need uh, some kind of container that's um, efficient uh, and uh, at the same time safe to use from multiple threads at the same time. And that container is called ARC, which is just atomic reference counting. So if you need to share resources between the same thread, then you should use RC, which is a reference counted, uh, just, uh, but it's not atomic. So it's not safe to, to um, uh, use from two different threads at the same time. Uh, but ARC is atomic. Uh, the reference counting is atomic, so you can use it um, at the same time from different threads. Um, similarly, mutex, like ARC, is only giving you read-only access. So if you want, um, if you want to modify uh, something, 
from diff different threads, then you have to put it in a, another container called mutex, and then you can, you can achieve the same. Um, that was my really, really quick introduction to Rust. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you have a lot of questions, but you can ask me later. Uh, now we come to the second part of the topic. Uh, it's uh, GStreamer. You, how many of you were in the previous talk? Quite a lot, but I'll explain very quickly then. <laughs> um, GStreamer is a multimedia framework. Um, it's uh, very, very popular, um, especially in the embedded systems out there. There's a lot of embedded systems using it. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's a very, it uses very simple concepts uh, like elements and uh, pipelines. You have a pipeline for each multimedia application you want to create. Um, you can have multiple pipelines in the same uh, application as well, but, um, and then you, you just, um, like, it's like Legos. You have multiple elements uh, doing different things. You just connect them to each other, and then um, you, uh, you have source, you have filters, different kinds of filters, and then you have a sync to actually play the media on. Um, a quick example is um, uh, if you want to um, play um, AUG um, uh, video with um, Vorbis uh, audio and Theora video in it. Uh, so um, you will create a pipeline like that. Uh, you something to read from the source, which is in this case a file, if you want to read from files, so file source. And then a demuxer, a demultiplexer, which demultiplexes uh, the video and audio parts and gives it to uh, these two different decoders, and then they go to the sync to, to be played, audio and video sync, whichever it is in this case. Um, and um, uh, the elements, they connect through something called paths, and, um, uh, and the, the way you connect uh, paths is that uh, each pad has a bunch of capabilities on them, which means uh, what can they do. For example, in uh, Vorbis decoder case, the sync uh, pad will have capability saying that, oh, I can handle Vorbis uh, video uh, of different kinds uh, with different properties. Um, but it can't, for example, you can't uh, connect it to the um, uh, pad from Demuxer, which the, uh, gives you the uh, Theora audio, for example, because it, it doesn't tell you that I can handle it, so you won't ever connect it. Um, it's heavily plugin based. Um, so um, the core of GStreamer is actually pretty small, so most of the things happen uh, through plugins, like all the actual capabilities come from there. Um, it's written in C. Um, it's multi-threaded. Um, well, it's for most app developers, it doesn't really matter in case of GStreamer, but uh, when you're writing plugins, if you're writing some complex plugins, I can be corrected if I'm wrong, but in, that, in those cases, you might need to um, you don't actually have to handle threads, but you have to take care of that. that <coughs> it's, this code is running from multiple threads, and you have to take care of locking and stuff. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, um, and um, so in a way, you have to care of uh, threading at some point or another. And also, like uh, I have never seen a GStreamer plugin uh, developer who has not touched the core. Like if they keep doing plugin development, at some point. The line gets blurred <laughs> very soon, um, and it's um, it's very object-oriented API uh, uh, using the G-object uh, uh, type system um, from glib, um, so you can do object-oriented programming on C level, um, and which means that on higher level, if you have bindings, then they get exposed as uh, in an object-oriented way as well. Um, so why is Rust relevant here? First of all, like major thing is like GStreamer has to be used for m media parsing quite a, quite a lot and it basically is about media parsing all, of, all, of, all it's about. Um, and you, you cannot really just trust a media uh, content like just start parsing it. You will have, a ma you can have many kind of memory problems and you can have kind of um, memory problem based attacks and stuff. Um, so, um, especially if you're getting it from untrusted sources, which you usually do like from internet and stuff. Um, so, uh, a, a safe language would be really good choice for, for this uh, because it makes sure that you don't do most of the memory, uh, you, you, don't, you don't make most of the memory handling errors in it. Um, so, uh, and another thing is multi-threading is hard. It's hard in every language, especially in C and C++. It's even uh, even much harder. Um, so, uh, as I said, Rust makes multi-threading really easy to handle. Um, e easy in the sense that it makes it makes sure that you don't do most of the 
uh, errors you will do in, um, you know, uh, when sharing, uh, for example, state between threads. Um, so since it doesn't allow you to do those things, um, it, it makes it easier, and that's why uh, in, in case of GStreamer, since it's multi-threaded based, so it, it's very relevant here. <laughs> um, and the concepts of mutability and ownership in, in Rust, they map really well uh, uh, to the GStreamer concepts. I had an example here, but I sk I'm skipping it because uh, we don't have enough time. Um, but I have a, I'll have other examples later. And to avoid memory, many memory errors in general, uh, as I said, in C and C++, it's really easy to do those. So Rust avoid, lets you avoid those. So also C is a very archaic language. Not, it's not just extremely unsafe. It's, it's from 70s. What, 70s, 60s, something like that? Anyway, 70s, 70s yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so it's really old. Um, we need some modern language which has more modern constructs and uh, stuff like that. Um, so, um, Sebastian sitting over there still, <laughs> he uh, made these um, first uh, Rust bindings, which is the first link here on GitHub. Uh, I think it's now on GitLab, right? On GStreamer, it's been merged. Um, I forgot to update these uh, links. Um, anyway, you can find it easily. Um, and um, those bindings uh, cover a lot of the API, I think most of it, all of it. Yeah. I can say all of it, yeah. Um, and, uh, GS and then um, he wrote a bunch of plugins based on uh, in Rust, um, and uh, based on these bindings. Um, so you have really good examples already of how to write plugins in Rust if you want to. And there's a place for them to go to upstream. Uh, if you want to write a new plugin in, in GStreamer in Rust, you can do that. Um, a simple example how it helps, um, Rust helps GStreamer. So I, I mentioned in my introduction to the pipelines and elements that you have uh, paths and you have capabilities on them. Those capabilities are represented in, uh, in GStreamer API by something called caps, GST caps. Um, uh, and each capability, because each path can have multiple capabilities, right? So each capability is represented by something called structure. <coughs> and so caps can have multiple structures, right? And this code, what it's trying to do is, um, it's a bit silly code, actually, you won't, never actually use that. Um, so it's uh, taking of the first structure um, in the caps, there is the first capability, and then it tells uh, the caps that I want to remove this capability now. And then the capability it got, uh, it's trying to set a G object property on that. Um, in C, if you write the same code in C, it will, compiler will be happy, it will let you do what you want, but you will have multiple memory problems uh, at runtime. Um, but Rust would not allow you to do that, as you can see here. The this is the first uh, error you will get from this compiling this code. Um, and it uh, seems a bit weird at first, uh, but I'll go back. Um, if you see uh, the first line, uh, you, you say get structure. But there could be that caps doesn't have any structure. So how does uh, Rust handle it? Because as I said, it doesn't do null pointers. So instead, what it has is um, enum. Sorry. Instead, it's, uh, it has something called, um, it's, it has an enum called option. And that enum um, uh, has uh, two values, uh, sum or none. In case of none, there is no data uh, associated with it. But if it's sum, that means there is something to be given, like it's not null. Uh, and then you can, you can uh, get, it, get that struct or object or resource, whatever it's in the option in sum. Um, so that's why you're getting this error, um, which just says that uh, what you got was uh, option, and option doesn't have this um, set method you're calling on it. So it's giving you error. So let's, let's handle that. Um, now we um, uh, parse that option. Um, Rust gives you a nice uh, construct to parse these um, return values. So you just say, I, I want to assign this to, if it's sum, then I want to assign it to S, uh, the actual struct structure. Um, and then you use it in that block, and then uh, if you just ignore the, uh, the case of none here. But you can handle it. If you have an else block here, that will handle the none case. Um, so now should, it should work, right? But no, you have other problems now. Um, you have a problem that you're trying to modify uh, uh, something that is not marked mutable. So the return value of this get struct, like when you get something, it's not mutable. It's not marked mutable. So you cannot 
uh, mutate it anymore. And you are trying to do it when you say caps dot remove structure, and you are doing s dot set. Um, both things are modifying something, so they are they need a mutable reference to work with. Um, so that's why you're getting these all these errors. Um, so let's solve the mutability issue. So instead of that, we just tell caps that give us a mutable reference first. Then you get a mutable reference to caps. Then from a mutable reference of caps, you can get a mutable reference of structure. And then you can do what you want, right? Um, so you do it's the same thing, uh, remove struct and then set. Um, am I out of time already? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, there is also then simultaneous mutability issue, but uh, we don't have time. But yeah. Anyway, the main thing is that um, a, uh, a C compiler would have let you do all these horrible things, but Rust stopped you from doing all the uh, uh, all these things. And then in the end, you come up with really really safe code. It was still useless, but it was safe. Uh, so anyway, I'll skip this. And yeah, thanks. <laughs> We have a few minutes for questions, if you want. Hi. Uh, how hard is it to com uh, to make ABI compa uh, to have ABI compatibility basically uh, with Rust? Because in C you can just define something in the C file and then yeah, you don't expose it. Or with GObject you also have the private kind of offset struct thing. Uh, how do we do that in Rust? Is it? I as far as I know, you you can't really like uh, it, there, there's no ABI compatibility right now. Like most. Yeah, the, un the long answer is a bit long, so I can't explain everything. But yeah, in short, um, you currently, it's not, it's not easily possible, at least. Other questions? Yes. Ooh. Well, you can always export in an API. Yeah. So, so you mean that um, you have a C a wrapper, uh, and then you um, what I was just saying is uh, you can always export a C ABI, and that's stable. Um, it's just that uh, Rust itself doesn't have a stable ABI at this point, mm -hmm. but you can export a C ABI. You can tell Rust that I want C ABI. Okay. Other questions? Okay. All right, then. Well, it was crystal I clear, I guess. <laughs> Everybody understood everything. It's cool. <laughs> Don't hesitate. We still have two minutes if you want. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Does the rest does the rest version generate basically exactly the same code as the C as the safe C version would? Or is it better or is it Worse. It's not the same, but it's yeah, it's safer. You know, you have you have to do something to make it safe, right? Can't be the same. You you don't have null pointers even at C level, as far as I know. Last question, maybe. Oh, I have two questions. Good. <coughs> I, w I was just wondering, in your examples uh, from Rust, you were defining a variable with Sorry? you were defining a variable with let, yeah, but it was immutable, yeah. and then you were still defining uh, uh, in your example again uh, as let, but then you got back a mutable variable. Yeah, isn't that kind of no? You got a reference it's like when you do the let, so you don't always have to t give it the type, so um, it can uh, Rust can do type inference. Okay. So it was getting a mutable reference to it just got But how would I know if it's mutable? Because of the return value. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean just I've never done anything with okay. with, with Rust, so no, I'm it's just fine. wondering. So yeah. <laughs>
at least in the method it said mutt. So it was obvious from the method at least. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, hello. We sometimes talk about uh, glue languages, as in higher level languages like script languages. And uh -huh. uh, is there like a trend, or can you see a trend where Rust could be used as a subsystem for higher performance and a higher level language, or like script, or maybe Go, because I'm more of a Go programmer, where they both could like collaborate in a like in an application? Does that make sense, or do you more uh, are Rust applications meant to be like entirely written in Rust? Well, you, you have um, a way to do um, FFI through unsafe code. So you can interact with any kind of language through, through that, not just C. Um, but it's not like it, there's no, I don't think there's a helper to make it easy for you, that, uh, for specifically for Go, I mean, or any particular language. I think there is some, something for Python that makes it easy to, to do like interaction between Python. Uh, the guy sitting next to you would know about that. <laughs> no, the other side, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you. <laughs> so, um, but no, I, I don't know of any Go, uh, specifically Go for Go. Uh, I meant as in uh, Go calling Rust. Uh, or or any way, either yeah. way around, yeah. Okay, right. thanks. But uh, as Sebastian said, you can uh, expose um, a C ABI, an API to through Rust. And uh, from Go, it's really easy to do C, so you can use it that way. Thank you, Zishan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.